Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to all my new followers and a warm welcome to those of you that follow me ongoing. So I hope you're all well. I actually did a Facebook Live on Friday and we were just having a little chit chat <coughs> and the lovely Wendy uh, Blakemore mentioned that um, she struggles with fussy cutting so as you know if you follow the youtube channel i do a lot of designs <coughs> excuse me with fussy cutting and i do designs without fussy cutting now my aim has always been to show just how versatile stamps are and they're just so cost effective because if you've got an image that doesn't date you can use them year in year out now, I was just thinking, and this is for Wendy if she watches the YouTube video, I also have, let me just grab them. I forgot to mention on my Facebook Live, Wendy, that I also have snippets. And the snippets have lots of videos like this is one layer and it's not got any cutouts apart from the sentiment. So if you look at the snippets, that are in the group on Facebook. They're all listed with links to the YouTube videos. There's lots of snippets that are one layer where you don't have to cut out. Like this is a really good one where you don't have to cut out anything. So snippets 63 and 64. If you're looking for a one layer idea, this is a beautiful one. I love doing this one. So again, I've cut out on that one, but you could just stamp on the top. But the snippets, it dawned on me yesterday the snippets are perfect if you just want one layer designs where you struggle with cutting out so there's lots of designs in the snippets with no cutting out no cutting out here just so you can see there's lots of ideas just so you can see these lots that one is one layer with no cutting out whatsoever and these are also one layer with no cutting out. So it's a good idea, it dawned on me the other day to have a look at the snippets if you want some ideas where you're not doing any cutting out. So at the moment I've got an offer on stamp sets TE1 to TE17. There's 10% off TE1 to 17 until Tuesday. And that's automatically applied at the checkout. So what I thought I'd do is we would create a one layer card. And I'm going to use my Abutilon stamp. And I'm going to use the Abutilon. And what we're going to do is just show, we can just do nice, simple designs. That's a little one cut out. So I'm going to use the beautiful Abutilon here. And it's always been my aim to stick to rubber stamps and stencils because I adore them. And I feel that they offer so much when it comes to variation. Um, and they, for me, even though you've got the initial outlay, this is like sort of a tool and it's there for you year in and year out. And we shouldn't forget them even when we purchase new ones. So what I'm going to do is decide on colours. I've just pulled out loads of greens like you do. Which one am I going to do? I think we will use, so I'm going to use oxides, twisted citron and peeled paint. And I'm going to ink up the abutilon just with the twisted citron which Tracy couldn't remember what the name was I'm good like that always forget the the names of things so I'm just stamping with the twisted citron and giving that a good layer of ink so a really good layer of ink on there and it's lovely just giving a nice simple idea so I'm then going to use peeled paint and I also think it's nice sometimes if you just want to get your your products out, but you don't want to do anything that's too, too difficult. So I'm going to add 
my abutilon just down here like so and just add the ink and it's got a lot of detail on the but abutilon because if you look at abutilon flowers they have actually sort of got sort of grainy lines on there so let's just give that a little bit of time just to absorb onto the surface of that card so just be just have a little bit of patience just to allow that just to absorb onto the card isn't that just beautiful as it is so what i'm going to do then i'm going to grab my stencil and you can always rely that the stencil isn't where I think it's going to be because I've... Oh, no, that's the wrong ones. I have actually got them in number order. The only problem is I pull them out and then I can't find them. I must have them out here. That's the bulb, bulb the light bulbs. Hmm. Oh, there they are. I just missed them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Snippet Stencil SS7 because I can use it now because they're back in stock. So let's use SS7. There we go. Like so. And when we have a little bit of creative time on YouTube, it's all about taking our time and just enjoying the process. Plus, Tracy has to keep getting comfortable because I did a little bit of gardening yesterday I actually moved, there were six bags of bark, but they were actually bales of bark. And in the shop, they'd obviously got wet. Well, you couldn't, you couldn't even lift them. My son lifted them and hurt his back. So I had to wheelbarrow the bark to the one border that I've done. Oh, honestly, I can hardly sit at the moment. <laughs> I'm terrible. I can hardly sit. So let me just have that there shall we say yes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take actually i could i'm going to take a little pencil line and i'm going to use my bauble and i'm going to draw a pencil line just around like so just so that the actual abutilon is included. The reason I've done the pencil line is so that you can see what my aim is, what I'm trying to do. So that I've got the pencil line on there. So I'm just going to grab a blending tool. So let me just see. So I've got one of my smaller blending tools now you don't have to do the pencil line the reason i'm doing the pencil line is so that you can physically see what i'm aiming to do is to keep that abutilon <coughs> inside the sort of bauble so let's just line this back up makes me laugh because i'm like i've just put it there so why am i not getting it lined up set so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a few of the green colors and what i can do is i can take my smaller blending tool and i can pick up the twisted citron and what i can do is i can start on there on your stencil so that you start blending and you start with that circular motion and you start to blend out the colour. Now, if you're not happy holding this in place, don't worry. You can just sort of add some low tack tape and just do it that way. So I'm just going to go round just to add a little bit of that green. And that just sort of gives me a base of colour. I'm just blending that out. 
and you can see I've left it sort of lighter in the centre area just so that you can see that so let's just <clears throat> so I'm then going to take my little brush just to make sure that that is clean I haven't got any clean kitchen roll as you can see it's all covered in blue but that doesn't matter so I know that my brush is clean and what I'm going to do is take the peeled paint we'll take a little bit Oh, look, you can tell there was green on here. Actually, on my non-stick craft sheet. So let's just add that here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of water and I've got my kitchen roll on one side and I'm going to pick up the peeled paint and I'm going to add some of that darker colour just around the edge. Now we already have the Twisted Citron already on there and that will react as we add the moisture. So we can just drag that out just to soften those edges a little bit, just to soften that out. And you're going to sort of keep it lighter in the center area and you're just going to take a little bit of water and blend that out we will also sort of work on our floral as well and sometimes you don't have to do anything too complicated to get a lovely result Personally, it's more about sort of taking your time just to just to get that result. So I've got my my greens on there, but I want something a little bit darker. I can go in more with the peel paint if I wish, but we'll use what, what other colours have we got? We'll use a little bit of rustic wilderness. So we'll take a little tiny bit of Rustic Wilderness, pick that up. Let me make sure that you can see what I'm doing. And we're just going to add a little bit of that Rustic Wilderness just around the edges. And then just with your slightly wet brush, you can, you can drag that out and soften the edges so we'll pick up a little bit more of that rustic wilderness and what we're doing is we're just sort of defining that edge and then we can just blend soften that out a little bit like so and then come into the peel paint you know like you would as if it was your pencils You've sort of got your dark colour on there and I'm sort of blending that out with the peeled paint. But it's like anything, it needs layers. I'm then going to take some Twisted Citron. <coughs> Let's take a little bit of our Twisted Citron. And then just blend out those colours a little bit more. Just right to the edge, just soften those out. Just so you can see, let's have a look. You're just sort of building the colour up. And what you're doing is you're just enjoying the process. But even though you've got a one layer card, you still want it to look, you know, you still want to be happy with it. So I'm going to bring a little bit more of this rustic wilderness out. And I can bring it out quite easily now because the card is quite wet. So it starts to sort of wick out anyway, which is wonderful because you've already got that wet moisture on there 
and it starts to, to soften out and just looks so much better. And then you can sort of use the water just to give it a soft edge. So I'm going to pick up the water now, just take off the excess and I'm going to, I'll pick up a little touch of the rustic wilderness and I'm going to add a little bit of the rustic wilderness just here, just on the abutilon. So just picking up a little bit of the rustic wilderness just for these pieces here. Now you've already got colour on the floral, so let's pick up a bit of peel paint. You've already got colour on your floral that you can quite easily sort of blend out. So it's already got those green edges to it. So let's just, we're using the peel paint just to blend out that rustic wilderness. But I want a little bit more of the rustic wilderness, which I haven't got much on there. So take a little bit of the rustic wilderness. And we're just going to make that a little bit darker. And it starts to wick out because you've got that moisture already on there. We'll take the tinted water and we'll pick up the peeled paint and just blend that out. There we go. But don't sort of dissolve your lines too much. So I'm going to use the tinted water and then I'm sort of I'm just going to soften the edges of my floral just slightly. So I'm just touching the edge of the abutilon just with a little bit of water. But what I'm not doing is adding any darker colour because you sort of you want to keep the lines, but you don't want it to dissolve too much. But I'm going to build up the colour even more on this top bit here. Now you can always go in and you can dry the flower if you wish. And then you can go in and add more of a layer of colour. It's entirely up to you if you want to do that. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the darker colour just to the edge. And then I'm going to pick up the peeled paint just to blend that out. There we go, just to blend that out. And let's just lift this up just so that you can see that you don't need to add much detail and it just works really beautifully. So we'll take a little bit more water. I've always got my kitchen roll here just in case I've got too much. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this rustic wilderness and then I'm just going to just add a little dark edge and then take off the colour and then just blend that out a little bit just to give that a dark edge so take a little bit of that rustic wilderness just a little bit Need a little bit more water because I'm not picking anything up. That's better. And just blend that out. So I'm just touching it with a little, little bit of rustic wilderness. Just to add a little bit more of that definition 
just so that you can see that. And because you've let this dry, just like you would with your pens, you can go back in with the Rustic Wilderness and then you can add another layer of definition just because you've let that sort of rest a little bit so you can add another layer of your rustic wilderness just to build that up again because it's been allowed to rest you can then pick up your I forgot the peel paint I can't remember whether that's peeled paint or not so you can pick up your peeled paint and then just go in and just blend out your rustic wilderness and then pick up your twisted citron and blend the third colour and what you're doing is again like if you even if you were doing your pencils you're just sort of adding let's add a little bit more to this side now you're just adding a little bit more depth and you can see the difference between this side and this side So now we'll go round, we'll take the Rustic Wilderness and we'll add that to the edge here. Just so that that builds up as well. And you can see how many layers we've added this side compared to this side. So let's add a little bit more Rustic Wilderness. And obviously any ink that is left, you could spritz with water and mop that up. If there's too much water, like there was there. Just take your time just to blend the colour. And it's just to show you that even with just a little bit of ink, even if you haven't got much product, you can still create a wonderful piece. There we go. Now we just need a little bit of definition just round here. The only problem with Tracy is that I enjoy being creative so much that sometimes, you know, I would even let that dry and even add some more if I wanted to because that's me all over. So, just, I just love how it's just lovely. It's fresh. It's just lovely. And we're just using that one tone of colour. So I need some text. So I'm going to use my TE11 just to add some text. So TE11 background elements. Again, that's another one of the stamps that's got 10% off at the moment. Just till Tuesday oh, as a thank you. I keep dropping it on the floor, which is really handy, not can't help myself but drop a few things on the floor so I'm going to take a little bit of I'm just going to put a mixture on so I'm going to add a little bit of twisted citron some touches of peeled paint and a little touch of rustic wilderness and then I'm just going to add some touches of the text 
just oh, lovely, really lovely, really like that. So then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take the Twisted Citron, a little touch of peeled paint, and then less of the Rustic Wilderness. Then we can add a little bit more of the text. I can just use that one finger and it, it works really nicely with the one finger because it means that you definitely just add touches of the text in a more random way. So Twisted Citron, Peeled Paint, Rustic Wilderness. And then just add a little touch of your text. Just use my one finger, just to add a little bit of that text. Look how lovely that looks. It's just really, really nice. So we're just going to carry that down here a little bit. So we'll just take Twisted Citron again, peeled paint and some Rustic Wilderness. And every time you do it, you do it a little bit differently. There we go. And you could probably still use the same ink just to add a little bit more. Just so that you can see. Let's stand up. It's really soft and it's just beautiful. It's really soft the way that it adds to that really nicely. We will sort of mop this up eventually. So I might just put a little bit of text sort of around there as well. That's it. Now, when you've used your oxides, just give your stamp a little bit of a wipe, mainly because you don't want to leave that oxide ink on there for the only reason that if you come in the next time and you want to add your VersaFine Claire, the black, it will just affect that. So just, just give the oxides a wipe off your stamp. Let's just place that here. Like so. And then I'm going to take The only problem is I never know what stamps I've got in and what stamps I've got out, it's here. And you can see that I have the Holly stamp out, which is dangerous because it means it's out somewhere on my desk. Here it is, which is quite frightening, really. So we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to use the Twisted Citron, like so. You're going to use touches of the peeled paint no different than you did with the text. And then touches of the rustic wilderness here and there. Let's just give this acrylic block a bit of a wipe. And then we're just going to add a little bit of the holly, which is from Holly and Berries TE21. Just, just lovely. You could add the second generation if you wish. So that's entirely up to you. But that is just lovely. It's so soft. Really works really nicely. I just love that. Works so nicely. So what I want to do now is I'm going to sort of spritz the card with water. Just so that the ink moves a little bit. So I'm just spritzing that lightly with water, just so that the ink moves a little bit. So let's just leave that on one side and we'll just pick up another piece of card. You've now got this ink on here. So you could just take the ink and whatever water's left on there and just mop that up. Just mop your ink up. I like to dab rather than swipe it through 
and you end up with a beautiful background. So let's grab our heat tool. So we can grab our heat tool, just dry this a little bit. And we can then layer the colours just on the card. So just dry it a little bit, pick up more of that colour. You can also spritz with water again. What I love about dabbing into the little beads of ink is you get these little beads of markings and it really adds to your background. Again, pick up the layers of ink. At this stage, you can then spritz with water so that you get that oxidization. Just give that a dry. And this is just from a little bit of ink that is left over on the non-stick craft sheet. Again, just pick those beads of ink up. The actual beads of ink, they really add some dimension if you just mop those beads up like so. And what you can do then is let's just give this a dry. What I would do is recommend that you let that dry naturally. You can spritz it with a little bit more water, should you wish. You can even spritz the back which is supposed to flatten your card out a little bit. But you can spritz that with the water and then you can just let that do its thing and, and dry naturally. What I would recommend then is that you add more layers. So if you're batch making, you'll then have more of the green ink and you can, you can batch make. There we go. So what I've got here is my card that has that soft look to it because we've spritzed with water and it has a nice, soft, gentle look to it. So it's just lovely. And then I'm going to take, I don't know why I've put it back actually, we'll take TB12, it's got the little... The little bird on TE12. So let's just grab TE12. TE12 is also wonderful for creating Christmas cards and that would also go beautifully with the Abutilon. So I'm going to use the little bird. So let's take the little bird. And I'm not worried that there's there's moisture on there. I'm not going to dry that. I'm going to allow it to keep doing what it wants to do. I'm then going to take my Versafine Claire Shady Lane. Take the Shady Lane. Ink my little beard. Just tilt your stamp. You can see if you've got the ink on there. And then I'm going to add my little bird there. Now you can see that I've used Shady Lane which is a permanent ink. So because it's a permanent ink that's not going to move with all that moisture that's on the card and also if I continue to spritz with water though this image the actual bird would not react to that moisture which is perfect. So let's just You've also, let's just pick up this stamp. I've got two little beards on there. I forgot I've got two little beards on there. You've also sort of on this stamp, you've got like little dashies and let, where's, pick up the packaging, Tracy. You've got little, little hearts and little bits of dots and dashies. On there as well. So I'm going to take 
some of the little dashes and hearts with the text. I'm just going to ink those up and then I'm just going to add a few of those just, just to my project. And I'm just using this here. It just sort of connects my little image to the stamp. And then you can add a little bit more to your background if you wish. I'm just going to add a few of those hearts just to the just to the background. And it's a permanent ink. I can add this on the top. I will lift this up so that you can see those hearts. Now this is with permanent ink. And Tracy will take ages deciding where she's putting that. I'm going to lift this up just so that you can see. Let me just lift that up. You can see those little hearts on there and a little bit of text just from there as well. Just works rather nicely just for, for that. Then I'm going to take a little, a piece of clean kitchen roll and I'm just going to dab just so that now I've got enough movement to that. I don't need any more. I can see that it's moved a little bit round here, which is quite nice. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take some hickory smoke ink. Let's put our little, little beards back from TE12. So you're going there and you're going there. I cut my beards out, but you don't have to do that if you don't wish. I can use my acrylic block just to add a little bit of the grey. So we just need to make sure that my brush is clean, which you already know that it isn't because it's got that green in there. I can use my acrylic block as my palette. Now, I only need a little bit of moisture on there. But you could leave your card there. It's got no layers to it. Perfect for Wendy. And then what we could do is just drag out a little bit of this grey. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a touch of water. I'm not using too much water and I'm sort of tickling the surface of the card. I'm just tickling that surface. And the reason that I'm tickling the surface is you don't want to spoil too much of your text. So I'm just sort of tickling the surface without, without doing too much. And I can just bring in a little bit more depth just down here. And because I'm using this fine brush, I can just add a little bit of the grey without affecting too much else. Because I'm, I'm almost using a dry brush. I'm not, I'm not sort of soaking the whole surface. Obviously this side, I have less text, or I have no text, so it's a little bit easier. So just take the grey and go around here. So I've not used many products. I've kept it very sort of minimal. Just so that you can see that one layer cards can be just as beautiful. It's just the time that you give to that card. And you can see now I'm coming and adding more layers to that, that grey. But because 
I've sort of spritzed the card. It has a really sort of soft feel to it. It's really lovely. But even when I'm doing this bit, it's, it's about just enjoying the process. And now for Wendy and others that don't like too much fussy cutting, you can just do experiment with lots of different colours. If you experiment with lots of different colours and your arrangement, so in other words, put your floral this side and put the bauble the other side. If you play with your arrangements, it's surprising how many different feels you can get to your project. It works really well. And also, if you look at some of my past videos, even if they're videos from five years ago, why don't you check some of those out, but use some of your new stamps? Because you'll get another different feel to your project if you just use your new images and, and do them in a different way. You'll just get a whole different feel. Can you see? Just, it's nice and watery and just, oh, it's just lovely. Really lovely. Just works so nicely. And I haven't dried anything with the heat tool. So if you don't even want to use your heat tool, you don't have to use your heat tool. You can just let that all dry naturally. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just sort of softening the edge of my grey. Just love that. You can even use a little bit of your grey and add a little bit more shading just to your got no water on there just to your floral you can pick up a little bit of the gray and you can make it a little bit darker should you wish just blend that out so you can also use your gray to make it a little bit darker i quite like how that all looks because we will add touches of white as well. Do I need any more of the grey? You can go round. The only problem I have when I'm doing this touch of grey is I'm so addicted to it that I can't stop. So I can add, there's not much grey on there. You can continue and as it dries, you can add even another layer, just like this, around your card. And just blend out more of the grey and make it a little bit darker. Let's have a look in camera and it just gives it that beautiful, beautiful shading. So let's just wipe my acrylic block. Now you can see why my acrylic blocks end up so dirty. So what I'm going to do then even though there's plenty of moisture on here. I'm going to spritz again with water, very light misting. And what that does is it sort of softens the edges of the card because those oxides are reactive to water. But what I'm going to do then is flick some white Posca pen on there whilst it's wet because it reacts differently, especially if your pen works. 
it reacts differently when the water is wet. It starts to bleed like you would expect paint and it softens everything. Let me see if I can show you. Let me just do another, a really big blob. There you go. Quickly, Tracy, can you see how it's merging into the background? So it merges with that grey and it softens it all. It sort of diffuses all the edges. So I'm just, and you can do that with splatters of paint as well. Because at the end of the day, this is a Posca paint pen. So wherever that moisture is, it sort of bleeds out into the background and adds to that background. Now, what I normally do then is I let this card dry naturally. So I'd let it dry naturally. And then once it was fully dry, I'd come back and add some more of the Posca paint, mainly because the Posca paint here will pick up some of that green and so you get sort of the tone on tone. But then when it's dry, I just add more layers of the Posca. But you can see now where that's diffusing and it really adds sort of to that background. I just love it, really adds to it. Of course, you would obviously wait until all this was dry. I'm not going to dry it with a heat tool, but you would wait for it to dry and then you would come along and you would add little touches of the white just to certain areas. You would add just some white to certain areas, but obviously you would let that dry. Then it's deciding what sort of sentiment you want to add to your project. Now, I don't want to, let me just place that back again. I don't want to add any dimension, just to show Wendy that you don't have to add dimension. You can just stamp your sentiment directly on there. So let's have a look on the holly and berries. We've got with warmest wishes, Christmas, holly. So I think we'll have the warmest wishes. We'll take that and you can see I've not dried the card. If you're happy cutting out the sentiment, then you could cut out the sentiment because that doesn't take too much cutting out. But obviously with dexterity problems, you know, cutting out can be difficult. So I'm going to use my black, the Nocturne Versafine Clair ink. And then I'm going to add with warmest wishes. Let's bring it down here so it's in with the cluster. And what I'm doing is, you can see I'm not pressing hard. The only thing that I'm doing is because there's moisture in that card, I'm allowing that ink just to sort of absorb to the surface. So just give that a few moments just to grab hold of the surface. So you've then got with warmest wishes just on your card. And if you want, those of you that don't have a problem with dexterity, let me just grab a piece of card, she says, grab a piece of card, and then I can't get my hands. Oh, come on. I couldn't separate the pieces of card. So then if you want to just add a little bit text so that's perfect for Wendy and you don't have to ha add the cut out sentiment there we go so I will just cut out the sentiment but you Wendy could quite easily just add your shading just under the wording there but for those of you that maybe want to add A little bit of text that's cut out you can do that if you wish just cut that a little bit shorter a little bit there so where i'm adding the shading now 
you can add the shading underneath or you can just add that little bit of a sentiment just to cut out but I have shown that you don't have to cut out that sentiment if you don't wish you can just stamp directly onto the project like so so just add that and then what you hope is that your grey pencil is somewhere handy. I never know whether I've pulled it out. This is what comes when you're doing 10 projects at a time. There it is. So we'll just take our ink tense pencil. Again, reacts with water. And then we can take our brush, a little touch of water. This is an ink tense pencil. It's called Chinese ink. I think it's 2030 or something like that. And I just like it because it just gives me a little bit darker shading. And if I want it a little bit darker under here, I can then just blend that so that it's a little bit darker just underneath there we go and then once your card is completely dry i can already feel it drying i go in and i just add and i'll show you how you can tell it's drying because now this Posca isn't moving, it's not merging into the background. But when it was just wet, it merged and it gives you these nice sort of watery feel. So I'm then going to add, you can add this to a black mat if you wish. It's entirely up to you. And then add it to your card. If you don't want to do that, which I like sometimes doing the white on white, or I haven't cut a piece of card out. Let's just grab a piece of white card. I think it's hilarious because if it wasn't on camera, I can pull out a piece of white card in three and a half seconds. You try and pull a piece of white card out when you're doing a live video and your fingers just won't pick up the white piece of card. So you end up faffing. So four and a quarter. Six and a quarter. There we go. So I don't buy card packs or card, uh, coloured card or anything like that because I just use my inks to create my own mats and layers. So I'm going to, I've cut a piece of card four and a quarter by six and a quarter because this piece of card is four by six. So it's four by six, pink frog, super smooth card, 300 GSM. So I've cut a mat three and a quarter by six and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is you can then, where are we? I can then take my twisted citron and I can just go round direct to paper, like so. Quite easily, direct to paper, done, wham. I've created my own mat and layer that matches perfectly with my card without any papers. So I can add a little bit of the peel paint just kissing the edges of that and I've created my own backing paper that matches perfectly. What we can do then is let's just add a few little splatters and to the ink that's on here, leave that on one side, bring in the piece of card that we had before where we were creating the background and dab this into those beads of ink okay 
spritz with water. Ideally, it's wonderful if you can let that dry naturally. I'm going to give this a little bit of a dry so that I can pick up these other beads of ink. Let's just put that on a flat surface somewhere. I don't have a flat surface, but there you go. I've now got a background here where I can create a card and I'll probably use my lovely moth because I think the moth would work beautifully on this background with one of the light bulbs. So I'll probably use that. You've got all this ink here. Don't waste it. But look how the beads of ink really sort of add depth to that. And if you keep spritzing, you'll add to that oxidisation. <laughs> But the actual beads really do add something. So I'm going to pick up these without sort of spritzing these with water. I'm going to pick up these beads of ink. Those bits there I won't bother with. Okay. You can also, if you want to add a little bit of vibrancy, you can still go in direct to paper with a little bit of the vibrant twisted citron spritz that with water give it a good spritz with water and what i would do then is leave that on one side to do its thing and i'll just leave that and then i've got a card that i can do with the light bulb and the um this one with the moth because i think that would go lovely with that background so i've now got my own backing paper here that coordinates beautifully with my background with my focal image i can also just so it coordinates beautifully i can even add some of the splatters just around the edge just here and there Just so it coordinates beautifully. If you want, you can spritz that with water again, just so that those sort of merge out, but I quite like it like that. I've still got a work surface that is wet and covered in green. So let's just give that a little bit of a, a clean. So I now don't need any card on paper because I've got my perfect mat and layer that coordinates beautifully with the piece that I have created. So we'll now add that to the mat and layer. However, the one thing I need to make you aware of is that you would do all this when it's dry. You would let each piece of card dry and then add your mats and layers because it's far easier to work with you're not trying to miss the splatters with your fingers, which I have to try and do when the card is wet like I'm doing now. So my card is all wet. So, you know, and I'm aware of that, but I'm just trying to finish the card so you can see what it will look like when you actually create the card. Bend that card so that the middle area here, that adhesive grabs hold. You want that to grab hold of that. And I've got quite a bit of ink, etc., on my hand. So let's just sort of clean my hands, just so that we don't put anything on the white card blank. We would like to keep that nice and nice and clean. But I've now created my own mats and layers. Just wonderful. I'm then going to add that to a five by seven card blank. So let's add that to a five by seven card blank. Like so. And then everything sort of coordinates really nicely. So the white 
of the card blank just makes everything pop, which is lovely. There we go. You could add an insert to your card for the recipient. There we go. Just so that you can see. You've now sort of got that one layer card because you don't have to add the cutout sentiment. It's all one layer, no fussy cutting involved whatsoever. So I hope you enjoyed that, Wendy, and I hope everybody else enjoys that and you'll give that a go. I just love it. I love the colours. So love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.